Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Jen. Um, many of you may know that I just recently put up a couple of videos a couple of weeks ago all about jewelry tools and all the basic tools, the most common tools that we use for jewelry making. But what I thought I'd do is kind of expand on that video and do a demonstration using the most common jewelry tools in order to make your own DIY jewelry. This is going to be a tool demonstration series, four parts. So this is video one of four. Today's video is going to be about the crimping tool and the chain nose plier that can also be applied to crimping jewelry. So I have just a small piece of wire that I've cut and a few little beads and a jump ring. Um, and then of course our crimp beads and crimp covers. Just to demonstrate in a very low key way how to use these tools when you are finishing your jewelry on beaded wire with your crimp beads or crimp tubes and crimp covers. So let's get started here on video one. What you will need is you will need a pair of crimping pliers. And there are two types of crimping pliers I have here. These are the Zuron. And I'll pull these right up for you. And as you can see, there are two divots in this tool. And the first divot has like a little thing poking out of it there. I'll show you right there. And that is designed to crimp the bead with the wire on each side to hold the bead, uh, in, uh, hold the crimp bead in place, to hold your jewelry in place. And then the second top um, hole here, you can see it's like a circle. And what you do is that is designed to fold the crimp once you've crimped it. And the same goes over here with our traditional and most commonly used crimping tool. There is the bottom divot here, which has, it kind of looks like a half like circle, but there's a little divot inside that crimps our bead. So we call that position two. And then position one on the top, it's like a circle, and then it's designed to fold your crimping bead or crimping two. So again, these are your traditional crimpers and your Zuron. The Zuron are much more pricier for more advanced users, but we're gonna do everything um, uh, three times today, and I'm going to use each of these tools to demonstrate how you use them to crimp off your jewelry. So what I've done is cut a little piece of scrap beading wire here. It's just a 0.019 inch wire. And I've just grabbed a couple of beads here um, that I would just string on. So we'll pretend that you have completed your bracelet or your necklace project and you're ready to crimp it off. So we assume that that's what we've done here, okay? So all you do to crimp is you simply pick up your crimp tube or your crimp bead. In this case, I'm using a number one. Let me pull those up here for you. These are a number one crimp tube. In a crimp tube, it's basically like a little cylinder. And it has a hole on either side. So these are a number one crimp tube. So you would pick up your crimp tube and let that drop down on your beaded design. And then you'll go ahead and I'm gonna use this jump ring, let me close this up. I'm using this jump ring as a demonstration to assume you're having, you're finishing your jewelry, so we'll make this our clasp. So how you would crimp is you would add your jump ring or your clasp at the end, and then you are going to fold over your tail and keep the, if I can get it there, 
and you'll keep the jump ring or the clasp on the side of your loop and you will take that tail and feed it through that crimp bead. Okay, just like this. And so now what you have is you have your tail and you have your longer wire with your beads on it and you will hold them apart and then up here you see how you have your clasp or your dangle on the side of the loop. And then you would pull your crimp bead to the desired area, just close enough to the end of that loop we made to make sure that your clasp or whatever you have on your end here, clasp or your jump ring or your dangle has enough room to move, okay? And then you're going to be sure to hold your beading wire apart and then we're going to crimp that bead. So let me turn myself around this way and get up close in the camera here. So now what you're gonna do is you would take your crimp tool and put it in the bottom number two position, hold that over your crimp bead and squeeze. And you simply squeeze. And now as you can see what happened is that crimped our bead and put a divot in the center of it. Let me keep that jump ring out of the way. And the wire is on either side. Now in order to finish off that crimping, we turn our crimping um, bead over this way, put it in the your tool in the first position and squeeze. And what that simply does is that folded our crimp tube in half. Now what we would do is we would, and if we want to cover it with a crimp cover, we simply grab a crimp cover and then we push it over the crimp tube and it'll snap into place there. And then grab your crimping plier and then you're just going to gently squeeze that crimp cover together and work from top to bottom to get that crimp cover closed to where it's gonna look like another bead. And that's a nice way to finish up your crimping to where you, if you do not wanna see your crimp for a more professional look. Okay, just like that. And now that's what we have. Okay, so really super easy. Now let's go ahead and go on the other side of my little wire, my example wire here, and let's do that crimp again using the Zuron, which is gonna be exactly the same process. So we would crimp, pick up our crimp tube or crimp bead, and then you would, just like I showed you over here, you would have your clasp or a jump ring and then you would keep it on this side and pull your wire over, making a loop, and feed that tail through that jump ring, uh, excuse me, the crimp tube, just like that, okay? Now, you'll hold your tail and your longer piece of wire to where they are not overlapping and we will put this in the bottom position, position two, and we will go ahead and let me just turn that so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and we squeeze. We simply squeeze. Then we will turn it to the side and squeeze it again in that first position. And that crimps and folds our crimp bead. And we would just repeat the same process if we want to put the jump 
um, the uh, crimp cover over the bead, we would simply slide the cover over the crimp bead and we would take our tool and slowly and gently close that to where that looks like another bead, the crimp cover, and it just went ahead and covered up our crimp. So let me cut that off and we'll do it one more time, which is a very common, let me grab my cutters, a very common way that a lot of people use this tool here, the uh, chain nose pliers. A lot of people use chain nose pliers to crimp as well. So I'll demonstrate how to do that. You would pick up a crimp beater or crimp tube, feed it on your wire. You'd have your clasp or your jump ring over here. You simply would pull your wire around in a circle, feed that tail through the crimp bead or the crimp tube, just like that holding your tail and your longer strand together, keeping the wires separated. And then you simply grab your chain nose pliers and then you just place them over the crimp tube or crimp bead and simply press. And it's the same concept. It just doesn't have a divot in the middle. And we've crimped. And so that is how you use a crimp tool, whether it's the Zuron or a standard crimping tool, and a pair of chain nose pliers to apply your crimp beads or your crimp tubes and your crimp covers to your finished jewelry. I hope you enjoyed that beginning tutorial, and please continue on the series to video two, which we will discuss the different types of pliers and how to use the pliers. Thanks you all for tuning in today and be well.